Our first order of business, once we reached Belize, was to meet up with an NGO called Healthy Reefs, who had chartered us to do some reef surveys. The entire coastline of Belize is fringed by the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef, the largest barrier reef system in the Western Hemisphere. It's the biennial monitoring work that we do for healthy reefs, for healthy people. Every two years we come out. It started out with Dr. McPhail uh, in 2005 uh, when she was trying to answer the question, is the reef in Mesoamerica healthy? Uh, so every two years um, we team up with partners across the region in Mexico, Belize, Honduras, Guatemala to go out and do just that, monitor the reef to see if, uh, how healthy our, our reef is. And so we look at both the, the corals, uh, the benthic community, which is the organisms, other than hard corals, and then the fish that also contribute to the health. For Belize it's, and for the region, uh, reefs have now become an important part of our livelihood and a, a big contributor to the economy. It's the composition and the makeup of several species that provide caverns and spaces um, for feed fish that then attracts um, predators and then you go up the, the pyramid um, all the way up to, to sharks which is one of those top predators so it really um, provides uh, habitat for a, a variety of species um, and then that expands out as the food web um, grows out. It's also known for, for lobster which is a big income earner um, as an export product. It's the same way that you have small fish within these caverns, you also have big caverns with big fish. We've found that the fish come to spawn around uh, unique coral formations. Uh, we call it promontories, uh, where there's a confluence of current. Whether or not it's the formation itself or whatever chemical cues bring these fish back every year around certain lunar phases to come and spawn, um, the coral formations are an integral or an important key component of, of that spawning cycle. It could be that it provides refuge so they will hang low within the crevices and the troughs of um, what we call spur and groove coral formations. One of the things that sparked the, the question about the health of the reef has been the changes in climate that we've observed over the years and in 1998 in, especially in Belize we saw the impacts of that climate change um, were huge areas of, of coral bleached because of intolerance of temperature and we had a, a serious decline in what we call uh, coral cover which is the percentage of an area that has live hard corals and then the fish becomes an, a key player a key component of that ecosystem because there's some fish that help to keep the coral clean there are cleaners around the um, the coral that, that has died but still has the chance of coming back, especially or what we call the grazers. We have um, several species of parrot fish that will go around keeping the coral clean. They're feeding on algae um, and, and they have strong enough beaks that where they will actually pick off pieces of, of coral at the same time. So it, it provides a nice clean surface uh, where there's no organism that will displace or prevent anything from recolonizing. There are a lot of species that, that are at play and so it's important to maintain that um, balance within the system. We have the algae, sponges, gorgonians, they all form a, a part of the reef system. And then the fish, there are either grazers, predators or herbivores. Belize has developed a, a good reputation for leading the way, for example, in spawning irrigation management when it declared 13 sites as no-take areas, as closed areas to fishing. And that has provided the impetus for the region to start looking at managing their spawning irrigations. And it's also established a marine protected area system. There's a long way to go, but providing the science for us to make good decisions on the best use of our limited resources for management, but also will help us to be able to maintain the resource and still generate benefits from it.